Hi, I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja. These pouches right here, they're so adorable and I wanna teach you how to make them. Now when it comes to crickets and sewing, some people like to use it to cut out basic shapes, but these are not basic shapes at all. Basic shapes can be easy on the cricket, but they can also be easy by hand. The intricate cutouts on these pouches, I would never try by hand. And that's why we're going to use the Cricut to make these. It's perfect to do this fussy work quickly and easily. So we have two pouch sizes here. We have the pencil pouch, which of course holds things approximately pencil size. I got a bunch of Sharpies inside here. It can also hold things that are a bit longer. We all know what size this is and it fits very nicely in there. We also have the small box pouch. It holds a lot of things really, really well. Sometimes I like referring to this as the period pouch because tampons fit so well in here. I got lots of different sizes in here, a cloth pad, and even some much bigger pads along the side. If you don't want to make this into a period pouch, you can use it for so many other things. All those clips that we use in sewing fit wonderfully in here. You can make this a small sewing kit. Your beauty essentials are the makeup you actually use in a little pouch. It's just such a convenient size for so many different things. So we have the small pouch, small box pouch, and we have the pencil case. Both of these projects use the same materials. This one uses a longer zipper, but you can just get long zippers and cut them short. Because it's always nice to have a longer zipper than you need for a project like this. Today I'm gonna to be using the Cricut Maker, but you can make this on the other machines as well, because we're going to be using the fine point blade and our materials are going to fit on a 12 by 12 mat. I'm sorry, Cricut Joy users, this project is just a little too big for your machine. However, I did include a tester bee and honeycomb that you can cut out on your machine and use it for other things. You can even cut it out in vinyl and put it on things. So if you're just loving these bees, I also want to let you know that I have more bee things on my website. Before I get into the materials that are going to be cut by the Cricut, let's talk about sewing supplies. Now this only takes a straight stitch to make, so you can make it on any sewing machine or by hand. It's actually quite easy to make by hand and there's not that much sewing. I do suggest you pick a felt, so you're going to be able to hand sew through it a lot easier than something thicker like this over here. I'm gonna be using a sewing machine today, but if you're brand new to sewing or your sewing machine freaks you out, I can help with that too. I have a bunch of videos, I even have a course. So let's talk about the fabric that we're gonna be making this out of now. There is a lot of materials available and obviously a fabric store full of fabric. But today we're gonna to focus on materials that don't unravel, they don't fray. So when you cut woven fabric or quilters cotton, slowly you'll get threads that come off of the end and it gets really rough and fuzzy. We're not using those today. We want any of the cuts that we make to stay stable, to have an edge that's not going to fall apart, kind of like leather. But we're not using leather today. You can totally use leather on your Cricut, but let's use some materials that are a little bit more um, approachable. The materials that we're actually going to use today for our project are Cricut Faux Suede, and Cricut felt. One of the great things about a Cricut and about making is that you get to choose the materials, you get to choose the colors, you get to really use your creativity to make something that's uniquely you. I don't want you to feel restricted by Cricut felt and Cricut suede. Hey, editing Alice here. I got so excited about all the materials that you could cut with your Cricut and then sew with that it just got really long. So I have added a video to my YouTube channel that goes really in depth into all of the materials that I tested and played with. Thank you again and back to Video Alice. But when you're working with a new material, you should still do a test. So included in the zip file is a B tester and that is so that you can Try out cutting the bee and the hexagon and make sure it works 
the settings that you have. If you are using felt, it needs to be bonded to something or you need to use a really sticky, sticky mat. And then your mat is gonna end up with felt stuck to it. I suggest just understand that you have to bond it and bonding it to freezer paper is simple, quick, doesn't damage the fabric and it makes everything a lot easier. If your top layer is felt and you want to be able to just stick your two layers right together, then you can use a product like Wonder Under or Heat and Bond instead. But I'm not gonna stick my two layers together permanently. I'm going to just hold them together while I do the sewing. So I am not using Heat and Bond or Wonder Under today. And that means our suede does not need to be bonded to anything. Although you totally could if you want. So over here on my ironing board, I have a Teflon cloth. This is just gonna keep the wax from the butcher paper off my actual ironing board. Uh, not that it matters, there's so much stuff on there. But you could also just lay down a piece of fabric or not worry about it. So I have my felt here and my butcher paper. And the side that's going to touch the wax on the butcher paper is going to be the wrong side or the back side or the ugly side because I'm gonna put the other side up and that just happens to be the way I like to cut things. This peels off the fabric so easily and doesn't leave any res residue. It can be either way. Also doing it this way means I don't have to ever worry about mirroring my designs to make sure they're going the right way. You see how this whole thing is a little bowing or cupping up right there? I'm just gonna release it and press it one more time just to make sure it's all flat. It does have a little bit of wrinkling going on. Happens sometimes, doesn't happen other times. The product still turns out great, so I'm not worried about it. So I have that bonded, and now I'm going to get a light grip mat because it's attaching to paper, so that will not be a problem. And then I like to make sure that it's really held down well. Next up, we have our suede. I'm going to use a standard grip mat. If your fabric mat is still grippy, go for it. So when I look at this, we have a smooth side. We had a fuzzy side. And we already learned that fuzzy sides do not grip well. So if there is a smooth side, you want to put that down. It means that we're putting the face of our fabric down. So if you are really attached to the direction that the bees are flying, you will want to mirror this. We are ready to get those designs into Cricut. So you've downloaded your zip file, it may be in your downloads or somewhere else. And if you click on here, you can either right click and go to extract all, or you can click on here and highlight everything and press extract all and it will ask you where you want it. This is just gonna be in my downloads folder. Again, that's its automatic place that it wants to put it. So now back in my downloads, you can see that here's our zip that we had and we have our files here. And they are all available for us to put into the Cricut Design Space. Now you may see more files here because I'm gonna put a PDF in here and some other stuff for you, but these are just the SVG files right now, so you don't have to think about anything else. And right here we have the Tester B, so you'll be able to try that out if you're testing new products. So I'm going to close these down and I'm going to open up my Cricut Design Space. I just have it here, it's easy for me to grab and it's going to open up. And then I'm going to click on a new project and then I'm gonna to go to upload, upload image, browse, and then I need to pick what we're going to do next. Oh, let's do this small pouch. Um, it's already in the kind of the colors we chose so it'll be easier for you to see what we're doing. And click upload. I'm going to select it. You can see I have another one over here from when I was working. It has a green edge around it, and then I click Add to Canvas. We don't have to do anything else before we click Make It. So we have our two layers here. We have the brown and we have the gold. That brown is out of faux leather. Um, it's Cricut faux leather, and there is a 
option for that. So we're going to press continue because we don't need to move these around at all or make any edits to that page. And now it wants me to hook on my Cricut and guess what? My Cricut's off. I know, shocking. So if you had the same error message come up, go and make sure that your Cricut's all plugged in and turned on. Now the one that's highlighted here in the white is the one that we're working on and it's taking a moment to load all the information we need. So I have some preset stuff here, but you can always go here and browse through all the different materials we have. Remember our first one is faux suede. So I'm just gonna type in faux. So you can see that we have faux suede here. Then we have faux suede Cricut. Now I have tried both of these settings with my machines and it doesn't quite cut all the way through. So I could go and have it cut a second time, but I have learned that actually the shimmer leather is perfect for getting this cut. It uses the five fine point blade and you can default to more pressure or regular pressure, just give it a check beforehand. Yeah. I did use more just because I know I had problems with it cutting once and it is ready to go. This is the perfect time for you to make sure you have the rest of your supplies to go get some coffee. I'm kidding. It doesn't take that long to cut, but we are doing some really intricate cuts here and it's actually going to go over those cuts a couple of times. The total time is about 11 minutes for this. Next up, we have the bonded felt. So I'm going to click over here to our next cut. It already had, but I don't know why I always end up clicking it. And we have a different material, so we need to go up here. And I'm actually going to use wool felt bonded because I want to change it to a rotary blade because it will go so quick. It doesn't have to do multiple passes. It just goes. And this can even be set to default. It doesn't need to be more. So wool felt is actually thicker. Um, you could go to a different type of felt and change the pressure for it, but I just, I really want to use the rotary blade. So here we are. Weeding fabric works the same way as weeding paper. Turn your mat over, go slowly, and you may find that your project is more or less stuck than you actually expected. The yellow felt came off pretty easily, but this suede was really, really stuck down. I ended up taking off the extra and then trying to flip it over again. Just go slowly, take your time, so that if there happens to be a small piece still attached that you don't rip it. Isn't weeding so satisfying? So the two layers need to be attached to each other for us to do the next step. You can put some glue stick or white glue on the back of this and stick it down. It's washable glue. If you stick it in the washing machine later, it'll go away. If not, it'll just sit there. It's not a big deal and most of us have a glue stick around the house. White glue also works great. I use temporary spray adhesive. I'm just gonna take this. I actually set it into my trash can just in the top of it, and then I spray it down. That limits the amount of sticky that I get other places, but it's temporary. It actually dissipates in the air. So if you have overspray, it will eventually go away. It um, dissipates from fabric a lot quicker than from paper. So I use it to make my f sewing patterns into giant sticky notes and then I just stick them to my paper, especially tiny pieces. Okay, so this is stuck together. And the next thing we're going to do is we are gonna sew some Flight of the Bumblebees through it. And you can see them on these. They're the little, little pathways. And no, there's no pattern. I haven't drawn it out for you. It's just random. Wherever your sewing machine wants to take you, it's where you go. So our bumblebees are going to go everywhere, so we are going to sew everywhere. So let's, let's start our flight. I suggest going slow, and if you have a way to slow down your machine, like um, some machines have a fast to slow button on them, it will be very helpful here. I do have that ability on this machine as well, but I'm just going to be a risk taker today. So our bees kind of wiggle as they fly, so I like to wiggle as I sew, there's nothing here that has to be straight. 
And I like trying to get near all of the bees because it's their flight path anyway. So I am going to be doing all of these in gold, but you could absolutely switch up the colors. If you had any problems with your bees, like if you had a little rip, you can totally just sew over that now and it will make it, it'll basically repair it so you don't have to worry about it. By the way, you can trace out the path you want to take. It's not cheating. I just kind of like going with it and seeing what happens. It means every single one of these that I make is a little bit different and that's fun. So now we're going to get this zipper on here. I need to use a quarter inch foot for the zipper. So we're going to line up this edge along here. If you have any of one fabric peeking out, if it bugs you, you can trim it. And if it doesn't bug you, just leave it. You can also trim it later. So we're going to line up this edge right up next to those zipper teeth. And we're going to set our foot right on top of it. So the edge of the foot is going to line up with the edge of the zipper and the edge of the fabric lines up with the zipper. So we're just pushing these together and sewing. And it will basically all ride very comfy and happy. And you won't have to really work at it because you're just pushing those two edges together and it wants to be like that. So next up we need to do the other side. But as you can see, we have a, a loop now. How do we how do we do this, right? Well, we're gonna actually unzip the zipper to do the other side. I am using a temporary marker. It disappears in the air. You can use a real marker or a Sharpie. You will never see this line. So all I did was mark where the edge of the zipper was so that when we grab the other side, we know where it was. So unzip and we're gonna fold this other edge around and line it right up with where it's going. This is also a great time to actually use a clip, but eh, I'm just gonna fight with it instead. No, that's a terrible idea. Let me clip. clip. Yeah. See, one clip and that's so much easier. So you can start before your fabric, then get everything lined up out of the way. Once you get right up to there, pull that clip off, make sure you're still aligned and just go for it. You have a quarter of an inch on either side. Any of that extra or any little fudge you made, it's gonna disappear in the seam allowance. I always like take a moment and just zip it up. Feels really good because you can see what it looks like at this point. And I do suggest you go through and trim all of these threads because zippers like to eat extra threads. Okay, we have our zipper in and all zipped up. And the next thing we need to do is those little loops. You can make them out of your ribbon. You can use the leftovers. As long as your leftovers are a stable fabric, you do not want to use felt for these pulls because they will not survive. I'm going to make them out of the ribbon this time. These will be folded and put in the seam. One thing I like to do is I like to seal the edges of my ribbon. So I heat them up a little, I wait a moment and then I squish and now they're stuck together. It is way easier than trying to pin the edges of a ribbon together. That sounds awful. Yes, it is kind of warm. Be careful. So our pulls are going to sit here. So we are going to find our center. Folding works really well and you can mark it or you can put a little snip tiny little snip. It's going to disappear in the seam allowance anyway. You could mark it with a little tiny marker. You could just kind of hold your fingers where it is. Remember pins will show on these faux suede or faux leathers. So be careful about where you put pins in. So it's going to go there and this is going to go here. Although you can leave the clips in for the next step, what I prefer to do is to just sew really close to the edge these two spots so I can just get rid of the clips and not worry about them for the next step. Okay, 
those are in place. Now we're going to turn it over, unzip most of the way, and flip the whole thing inside out. Next thing we're going to sew is across here and across here. By the way, if you have any extra on either side, just kind of even it out. If our seams are not exact and perfect, it can have a little bit of variety, but it's going to be super close. So we're going to be sewing our lacrosse here. Sometimes it helps to put clips here because you can leave these in. Now to the other side. The easiest thing to do is to just line up those corners. And you're going to notice that those zipper teeth are super close to each other. That is awesome. They're going to try to jump away from you while you're sewing. So just clip them and say, no, you can't go anywhere. So I'm using the edge of my presser foot. That is a quarter of an inch. And I am going to do a little back stitch there. And a back stitch at the other end. That just adds a little bit more stability. So while I have this side over here, I'm going to actually do one more row of stitching just in the center here because that small spot in this pouch gets a lot of force from opening and closing it right here. So I'm going to add that extra row of stitching to really reinforce it. Here's we are the other side where the zipper is all together. It's the easier of the two sides. Our zipper is nylon or plastic, so you can absolutely sew right over it. Our ends have been sewn, and let's get rid of that extra zipper. Again, the zipper is made out of nylon or plastic, so you can absolutely cut through it. I am just quickly melting the end of my zipper so it doesn't fray. Next thing we need to do is box the corners. This is the part where people feel most confused, so let me show you it from a couple angles. One. Reach my hand inside, turn it, and squish it all together. And then I'm going to take these seam allowances and I'm going to push them towards the bottom of the bag, so away from the zipper. And clip it. I'm going to do this one next. Ready? Open it up, push. All those pieces lay right on top of each other. I'm doing a little bit of squish action. And then the seam allowances are going to go away from the zipper. So they're going this way this time. Look, it kind of looks like a pouch now. By the way, there's our loop. Okay, you got in the right spot. So we are boxing those corners. If you have any wigglers, don't be afraid to add more clips. I'm going to do a back stitch at each of these points. We're going to be pushing pretty hard on those points to get it nicely turned, so reinforcing them a little is totally fine. So these seam allowances are a lot. They are super thick and you may end up experiencing some difficulty with them. So while I'm doing the last one, let me show you a trick. Um, obviously I didn't experience any difficulty with them, but that's on this exact fabric with these exact settings today. Another day, I can have problems. So it's always good to have a trick in your book. So here we go. On this one, I can either sew this way, where I'm gonna be having these seam allowances come at me. That's gonna be hard. But if I flip it over, all of this fabric is just gonna kind of round out all of that and make it easier. The other thing that you can do is you can use a tool to help you. So right here, I'm getting to all that thickness. If your sewing machine is angry at you right now, like it doesn't want to move, take anything. Um, this is a piece of the cork fabric, but uh, you stick it underneath the back and that makes your foot level. And then your machine will go without any anger. They make tools for this. They're called hump jumpers or Gina jigs and they work the same way. Okay, it is sewn all four corners. This is the bottom, it's the top. 
The zipper's here, we haven't screwed anything up, let's do this. I like to stick my finger in each of these points, push them out. I know it's still inside out when I do this, but somehow it helps. So I go and I push all of these points and then push out the top. Ta-da! Oh, that is so cute. So obviously, I have used a light color in the back of all of these. If you check in the PDF, you're gonna see other color options just to help with your creativity. Cause I really got stuck on this whole yellow in the background cause it's honeybees, but um, reversing any of these colors also looks good. Um, obviously black and yellow looks great, but yellow with black in the holes also looks super like silhouette shadowy. So use your creativity and decide which one you wanna make. So the last thing is pressing, but this being polyester, you're gonna have to use a really low iron or you can just go along the edges. So take the points, lay it down and kind of run your thumb across it or a bone turner and it will give it a little, a little bit of a more square shape. And you can go here and kind of squish that a little. So here we are surrounded by the chaos and destruction of a project. But it's pretty cool, right? So now that you've made this one, I want you to do it again. I want you to make this one. It's all fresh in your mind. We just did it. You just did it. So do this one now. It'll be so easy. You're going to breeze through it. The first time is always the hardest, right? The first time you do a project, the first time you try a new thing, it's hard. And the second time, whoa, it's like building Ikea shelves. The first shelf, hard. The second one, that was easy. So take, take what you have here. Take that confidence that you just gained because you just made this. Make another one. You're going to be making these right and left. All your friends are going to have bee pouches before you know it. Not kidding. It happens that way. So if you're in love with this bee design on the pouches, head over to my website and sign up for my newsletter because I have more things that have these bees on them. And I'd love to share those other projects with you. And it has a place where you can sign up to join my mailing list and get access to my entire freebie library. There are lots of other sewing patterns in there, access to all the other bee stuff. And you can find more information out about my class, which is called Zero to Sew. Just like the name, you're not expected to know anything. So if you've gotten to this point in the video and you're looking at this going, I want to make it, but, but I don't know where to start. You got to take that first step. Remember when you got your Cricut machine, that first step was hard, wasn't it? Same thing with the sewing machine. That first step can be hard. And that's what I'm here for. I am going to help you take that first step. We start right from the beginning. You understand all of the buttons on your machine, how to change the stitches, what, how the stitch is made, how to fix the stitch if it's not right. All those things that just, they seem over your head when you start. That's what my course is for. It's to break that all down and to make it so you can learn to sew without being frustrated. I'm here to help you. I want you to be a success. So head over to my website, sign up for my email list so that I can share all these wonderful projects with you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja and I want to get you sewing. I hope you enjoyed this project.